Argentina is going through an economic crisis. What you need to know, how it's going to be affecting you, and why all this is important. Coming up next. Lambo, I had no idea that you were part Argentinian. Really? Your father was a horse for one of those gaucho guys? Wow, man, that's just crazy. No, no wonder, no wonder you're, you're worried about what's happening in Argentina. It's getting crazy out there, man. All right, man, you know what? Let me talk about uh, exactly what's happening in Argentina to these fine folk out here, which have tuned in uh, for the same exact reason. How's, that, how's it going, fine folk out there? Hey, guys, how's it going? And welcome back. <laughs> um, Today, I'm making a video on Argentina from by popular request. Shout out to you out there. You already know who you are. two years, a little bit over two years ago, um, around May of 2017, um, the peso in relative to the dollar was at, it was one dollar to around 19 to 20 pesos, which is what's the exchange rate here in Mexico, all right? Now, as of today, instead of one to 20, and these are just, you know, um, estimations here, you know, instead of, you know, it's like 18 something or 21 something. So, you know, just bear with me here. But two years ago, it was 1 to 20. And as of today, it's 1 to 60, give or take. Okay. So it literally tripled. So something that would cost you $33 is now costing you $99. Okay. Right. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> Sorry, my math is not so good sometimes. Okay. But anyways, but yes, and so like, yeah, it, it will triple. So literally, you know, something that costs you 33 bucks will end up costing you 99 bucks, okay? Within a two year time span. So that's crazy, right? And uh, they haven't seen anything yet. So now, look, now, to put some more context into this, I was watching, again, a vlog. And um, within the vlog, she just said, hey, I, I have been gone from Argentina for three years. So three years ago, okay, the dollar to the peso was even less. Okay, it wasn't 1 to 20, it was like 1 to 10, 1 to 15, I don't know. But it was, and she was saying that back then things were already bad, people were already living the paycheck to paycheck, things were really pretty bad. Okay, now I don't wanna, you, I don't wanna side verge too much in the conversation here, but I was also watching some other things on uh, Argentina, and uh, you know, f back then, a few, you know, again, we're talking about just three years ago, and moving forward to today, you know, not only are there protests, and um, you know, uh, a lot of people that are angry, you know, a good majority of the population that are angry um, on the streets protesting the economic situation, but they're also protesting human rights violations, aka they have a same similar situation as they do in the U.S. with police violence and police brutality and police um, not having any um, accountability for their actions. So the same thing that's happening in the U.S. is actually happening in Argentina and I was surprised, I had no idea. So people are protesting that, people are protesting the economy, people are protesting um, the, the job situation. You know, besides the fact that there are no jobs and the jobs suck, sound familiar? But the fact that on top of that, the few jobs, the good jobs that are out there, good, bad, whatever, they are overly exploitive of the people, sound familiar? So, you know, everyone is being completely exploited, meaning that, you know, they're worked 10 times harder than they ever were and they're making 10 times less, sound familiar? So. That's happening in Argentina. And so in a short time span, you know, um, everything went from like 15 pesos to a dollar. Okay, so one dollar got you 15 pesos to 20 pesos, 25, then overshot to 40, then from 40 all the way to like in the 45 range for a little bit, then shot to 50 something range, 55, whatever, and now close to 60. And I think today, literally because of the news, which again, it's it's weird because this news would actually make it me like, it, it should right now because of what the news, oh yeah, by the way, what is the news? That no Argentinian citizen can uh, exchange pesos 
for dollars anymore. Now they can, but they can't. They can only do ten thousand dollars a month, and um, they're going to be very restrictive on how. Um, they can exchange your money, meaning that everyone has to have pesos. If anyone has dollars or any other currency, it has to be all pesos. And um, and they're going to just go into um, have forcing everyone to use pesos and nothing else. Now, something like Bitcoin, okay, is uh, going to do wonderful here because first of all, Bitcoin is loved by Argentina for whatever reason. And uh, number two, this is not one of those currencies in which uh, was mentioned you know, that cannot, you know, in which pesos can't be moved into. So this is going to be a very interesting situation, all right? Because again, if Argentina goes into massive hyperinflation, all right, and uh, everyone's uh, putting their money into Bitcoin, you already know what's going to happen. It's going to raise the price of Bitcoin. Show me the money. But anyways, I digress, okay? Just like gold and silver, by the way, all right? Same shit, but I digress. Um, you know, the, the, so that happened in, uh, that's happening in Argentina. Now, sure, that's news, but you know, there's so much more other things going on in Argentina. You know, again, they're talking about, um, you, they just said that they're gonna be raising the minimum wage of 33% with, you know, they're gonna start implementing 33% wage increase. Now, again, if you just do the math, all right, um, it went up um, 66%, right? Remember from, uh, you know, from $1 to 20 pesos, you know, that exchange rate all the way to where we are now, 1 to 60. Um, it, you know, it, you know they're, they're going to raise the minimum wage 33%, and, and when, by doing that, it's still not going to be enough with the rate of inflation. And by the time they implement it, imagine how much higher the inflation is going to get. Now, again, even with today's news, um, which should have driven the disparity even further, meaning a dollar would be, you know, to 66 pesos or 70 pesos, actually it dropped it to 56 pesos, 50 something pesos, but whatever. Now, the point I'm also want to make is that when, before I moved out to Merida, Mexico, before I made this kind of like my permanent home base, uh, even though, again, I still go back to the U.S. and all that stuff, but this is my home base here. Um, when I, before I decided to do that, um, a year and a half ago, okay, give or take, was it a year and a half ago? A little over a year, but almost a year and a half ago, um, I was thinking about moving to Argentina. I've always wanted to go to Argentina. I think Argentina is fucking awesome, great, wonderful. But back then, um, back then, remember the exchange rate was, um, let's just say, one to 25, one to 30, one to something like that. But when um, really exchanged to dollars, things were just as expensive as LA, which is where I was, or a little cheaper than LA. But, you know, it was relatively costing the same to live in Buenos Aires as it was to, to live in L.A. So, unfortunately, that's why I could not make the move and I made it out here to Medida. It was, again, a major, you know, major contributor to that was a financial situation. But the exchange rates, you know, were pretty much the same. Is that, you know, a, a, a one U.S. dollar got me 20 pesos one US do in, in Mexico. And one U.S. dollar got me around 20 to 25 pesos in Argentina, but over there, because of the hyperinflation, okay, um, it, it, it was this, it was it was relatively the same as the dollar. While here, it was 33 percent. Everything's 33 percent less pricey. Everything is cheaper. Meaning, you know, like a big bag of chips. You know, like this is a big bag of chips, okay? But this big bag of chips is like uh, two, three dollars. You know, we're back in the states to be like you know, nine dollars, six dollars, I don't know. And so many other things, all right, whatever. I don't wanna go through the whole, um, what is it, <laughs> price of living, what is it like, uh, cost of living out here. You guys uh, can watch my other videos on that. But again, things are relic way cheaper out here, okay? And things are way more expensive. Well, now they're even more expensive in, Argent in Argentina. So now, since, remember, um, the exchange rate is that close to the dollar, so what's happening now is that Imagine that everything that costs you a dollar in the U.S. costs you three dollars. So, and, and again, in the, in Argentina, you know, things that cost a dollar now cost three dollars. And so, right now, things are actually way more expensive in Argentina in dollar terms than they are in the U.S. So that's kind of fucked up, right? So imagine that situation. You think things are bad in the U.S. right now, or in other Europe or other parts? Again, look, Argentina is going through something really bad. When I was talking about Argentina, I remember a while ago. I would, I remembered that you know one of the things that the people of Argentina were really like, you know, rallying against was because I think it was like six months ago. I want to say a year ago, maybe a, I think it was a year. I think it was at the, the end, the end of 2018. So nine months ago, give or take. All right. Um, don't quote me on the time frame, but um, what, what, what was being proposed by the international 
Monetary Fund, the IMF, the central bank. You know, what was being proposed to Argentina was saying, we're going to get rid of the Argentinian peso altogether and just use dollars here. Okay, and everybody was like, no, 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 we don't want that, we don't want that. We need our Argentinian peso, we need our sovereignty. Okay, we can't have, you know, the, our country of Argentina be using dollars, US dollars as, a, you know, the, 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 the currency. So, fast forward to today, where now it's backwards, you know, where now what they're doing is backwards, meaning that they're pushing US dollars out and forcing everyone to use pesos. All right, see how everything is uh, kind of you know coming full circle you know in a weird way so you know just to give you know perspective on the whole uh, you know situation there with um, with their currency okay so they are pushing away the dollar they are becoming more sovereign okay because they're very unhappy with this government and um, in this new interim election um, um, I think he was you know on the who he was losing or something by 15 percent so it seems like the next government which might be a left kind of left government you know kind of like something that we have in mexico and in other parts of latin america um that's going to be the next president the next government that's going to be taking place in uh in argentina and um they're pro bitcoin um it, the, we already know what's happening with the argentinian peso it ha it's only the beginning stages of hyperinflation Okay, they're not going to be able to get this under control. I, they're not, especially pushing the dollar away. Um, so this is going to be very, very interesting. And again, watching this uh, as it takes now, 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 one thing I want to do is also talk about the comparisons, you know, between Argentina and Venezuela. You know, Argentina and Venezuela are going to be going through the same economic situation. So what happened in Venezuela is what's now going to be happening in Argentina. Now. What happened in Venezuela was all caused by the U.S. government, the U.S. government sanctions, U.S. government and, um, you know, um, and, and their um, military. Um, on top of that, you know, um, the, the central banks of the world, you know, have also cut off, you know, Venezuela. So meaning Venezuela cannot use banks, you know. They <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Central banks struck again. No, actually, I just ran out of battery. Sorry. Anyway, so, but yeah, as I was saying about Venezuela, you know, Venezuela has been cut off, you know, from the whole banking, uh, you know, the whole, situ the whole, you know, the, the swift payment system, you know, the whole banking payment system. Remember, um, everything is digital now, okay? Like it or not, okay? That's why the whole Bitcoin thing is like, oh, it's not going to take you. Bro, everything's already fucking digital. I mean, don't you have a bank account? Anyways, anyways, I digress. The point is, is that um, Venezuela as a country has been cut off from the, the banking uh, payment system, you know, meaning that they can't move money or funds around. That's why they've had to use cryptocurrency. That's why other countries have been stepping in, like Russia and China, to help them out, you know, moving things physically, literally, you know, like getting ships full of gold and commodities and all this shit. Okay, so <clears throat> now that that's why Venezuela's economy tanked. It was one of, the, you know, there's several reasons, but a lot of them were, a lot of the reasons were because Venezuela kicked out the central banking system, you know, meaning the Rothschilds run banking system out of their country and, you know, the U.S. led, you know, coalition, okay, because again, the banks are the ones that tell the U.S. what to do in case you're not aware. Um, so anyways, um, they, you know, were the ones that came, said, okay, now we have to have war with Venezuela. And so since they can't have straight up, you know, pew, 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 war, they got to have an economic war. And so that's what they've been doing. And that's what's going on. And um, because of Russia, China, and others stepping in and helping out Venezuela, you know, things are turning around in Venezuela and they're doing good. But I digress. That's not what we're going to be, you know, we're talking about Argentina today. I'll do a, another episode on Venezuela soon. But... You know, when it comes to Argentina, you know, their situation, okay, their hyperinflation, their deterioration of the economy, their, you know, everything, you know, their whole downfall of the economy was all led by central banks. It was all led by the IMF. It was all led by, again, the same group of people that say, listen, our system is the best. Don't go with your system. So, again, you know the, the central banks went go to war with or want to go to war with countries like Venezuela, Cuba, Iran, North Korea, and so on and so forth. Because these countries, you know, don't have central banks. There's other countries out there as well, but they don't have. They do have central banks, but they don't have Rothschild-run central banks. Okay, and so because of that, 
That's why they, they become public enemy number one. And so, and, and, and so what happens is, is like, like look at the case of Iran, you know, they have a great economy and up until all these sanctions that have been fucking put, put on Iran by the US. And again, we know the famous quote that was just said a few months ago by Mr. Sherman, okay? Not uh, an awful lot of our international power comes from the fact that the dollar is the standard unit of international uh, finance and transactions. Clearing through the New York Fed is critical for major oil, oil and other transactions. And it is the announced purpose of the supporters of cryptocurrency to take that power away from us, to put us in a position where the most significant sanctions we have on Iran, for example, would become uh, irrelevant. Of um, our own, of the US government that said, listen, we gotta make Bitcoin illegal because otherwise, countries like Iran and Venezuela and others can get around the dollar, get around sanctions, and therefore, you know, you know, this whole economic warfare isn't good to us anymore. So, again, guys, you know what I mean? You know, they say it themselves, you just gotta listen, assuming you wanna listen. I think a lot of you guys do, that you guys watch me. But, again, as I was saying, um, you know, um, the whole thing, you know, that's happening with, um, with Iran, you see them accepting Bitcoin or at least trying to figure out what to do with it. Our Argentina is very Bitcoin friendly. You already know that our Venezuela is. Despite everything you hear, seriously, things are uh, very Bitcoin friendly in Venezuela. Because of uh, the things that are happening, you see a lot of people using Bitcoin and, um, and uh, using digital currencies. And again, places like, big, places like Argentina, places like Venezuela, places like Iran. But I digress, you know, the U.S. right now, what they do against these countries that don't follow orders, that don't use the dollar, that go against their central bank, you know, um, regime, uh, whatchamacallit, um, ideology, is that they, they do economic warfare. And in some cases, they go with real warfare, like Libya. We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> like um, Iraq and so on and so forth, okay? but. Again, you know, we've been tired of talking about this. We're not talking about that. We're talking about Argentina. So in Argentina's case, you know, they have a central bank. You know, they're being led by, you know, these mystical, magical banks, which are supposed to be so great and wonderful. And look what's happening to their country. Okay? They, down there, you know, in Argentina, are doing everything humanly possible. We're talking about the government and the people running their government. You know, again, the central banks that are running their government. Um, you know, they're doing everything humanly possible to save this economy any which way they can. And they can. And they won't. The whole country is going to go in default like it has many times. They're going to go broke like they have many times. And it's just, you know, um, rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat, okay? So in the case of Argentina, they allow this, you know, these economies, you know, every 20 years or so, you know, to go through these cycles and bam, you know, in places like Japan, you know, they're going on like 40 years strong or some shit like that. That shit should have fucking exploded a long ass time ago in the 80s, some shit like that. But anyways, I'm talking about Japan here because again, what Japan, or what they signify is because remember they're owned by the U.S. and they're owned, uh, you know, by uh, central banks and U.S. Uh, you know, central bank interests. So they, that's why their currency and everything's so expensive. It's like forty thousand yen for like, uh, you know, again for something that, or for a hundred thousand yen for something that costs fifty bucks. I have no idea what the exchange rate is. I have no idea, but it's something like that. And the reason that that happens is because again, you know, their economy, their yen, their you know, um, currency is hyperinflated by the dollar and um, they're just like a sponge for the dollar, you know, because again, remember the dollar's going through hyperinflation, but because of the dollar in the U.S., you know, having all the power of the pew, 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 pew army, um, they can do things like this in which they can use countries, you know, as sponges, you know, for their hyperinflation and other cases for hyperinflation, you know, and other cases, you know, in which, uh, you know, they, they, um, they spread their dollars so that they don't necessarily feel the people of the U.S. don't feel the hyperinflation. But as the dollar gets deteriorated, you know, further and further, as less and less countries use the dollar, because again, Argentina, remember nine months ago, the IMF, IMF was proposing for them to switch from dollar you know, from peso to dollar, and they said no, nine months forward to where we are today, now they're forcing their citizens to exchange all their dollars for pesos. And they have to only use pesos, and they can use dollars 
for business reasons or what have you, but they're now being very severely limited on, the, on how they can, uh, how many dollars they can exchange per month. And so again, remember, we got to look at, you know, I know that some people were report, reporting on this uh, news, but um, you know, we got to look at the whole context and the whole um, situation here as to what this really, really means. Okay. It means that, you know, again, from the looks of it, from my looks of it, it seems like they are getting away from the dollar. I mean, isn't it obvious? And they're trying to save their own country. Okay. And we're getting, again, we got to remember what was uh, being said by the IMF months ago. Okay. And uh, again, if Argentina would have accepted that deal of uh, having dollar, the US dollar as their currency instead of the Argentinian peso, then the US would have been like, fuck yeah. And then they would have fucking used Argentina as another sponge. But the people of Argentina know that because again, they go through these cycles every 20 years or so. So they're like, no, thank you. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. Suck my balls. You know, no thanks. And so, you know, that's kind of like Argentina didn't. If you know Argentinian people, that's probably, you know, most likely what exactly how they said it, only in Spanish. Vaya se boludo, you know, vaya coño la madre, whatever, anyways. Um, not good at, I'm not really that good of impressions. Um, but yeah, guys, I mean, you know, I hope um, I cover, I think I covered a lot. I'm not quite sure how much I covered here, but I think I um, was able to cover the whole Argentinian situation, uh, you know, with more context and a bit further and for you know you guys out there to you know understand a little bit more as to what's happening um what's going to be happening with the u.s i mean literally because this is exact scenario is going to eventually happen to the u.s and we're going to see this exact scenario happen to countries all around the world that are you know tied down to the dollar all right we just are and um you know, right now I'm in Europe, you know, there's already countries that have gone through this and, and since, uh, since the economic crisis of 2008. So, you know, talking to you, Greece, right? Talking to you, um, what's happening today with Italy, talking to you, a few other countries out there. So, um, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, this is only going to exacerbate all these countries that have been, have been run by central banks are now imploding and eventually, you know, all going to be hitting some sort of uh, hyperinflation st st state. And um, they're all trying to avoid it because, again, the reason that Greece, you know, um, and Italy and a lot of these countries are not going to be hitting that crazy hyperinflation is because they're under the euro and the, the central banks are controlling that. And, um, you know, that's why they just notice that they all want to go back to, the, to their own currency. You know, the, the you know, Greek, you know, the Greeks, the, the Italians and, and uh, Spain, you know, plenty of countries in the EU, you know, look at Brexit, you know, they all want to break off and they want to go back to their own currency. Well, no, the, you know, the... England already has their own currency, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and, uh, and that's what, you know, all these countries want, just like what you were seeing with Argentina. We're seeing a lot of uh, national, uh, what is it, uh, nationalism happening all around the world, not just in the U.S., all right? And um, it's going to be very interesting to see how all this plays out, but, you know, we need to keep an eye on this because, again, guys, you know, none of this is going to be reported on no CNN or anything like that. You are fake news. You know, you're not going to see this anywhere else, and uh, you're probably barely going to find it on uh, the YouTubes either or anywhere else out there. Um, so, you know, this stuff is uh, very important news. I want you guys to please ask me questions. Let's keep this conversation going because the more I see interest from you guys, the more I'll be able to cover this. All right? Literally, I need, I need you guys to show me, you, you know, interest in this so that I can... Um, you know, go forward and make episodes on this, all right? Um, now, I'm going to be making another Venezuela episode soon um, so we can continue talking about this stuff, all right, to see, you know, where they're at. Um, but, you know, I think we kind of covered a little bit here, um, and that's it. I mean, honestly, you know, I want to talk more about this stuff. We're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff here, you know, what we do on this channel. And I want to give a big, sh big shout out to all my new, uh, my new viewers today, all my new viewers, period, you know, that I've been getting a lot of subscribers, almost at 2K. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be hitting 2K by my birthday. When's my birthday? September 18th for anyone out there. Um, so, you know, by the time my birthday rolls around, I mean, it's going to be awesome. I think I'm going to get to 2K and yeah, buddy. All right. Um, what else? Um, what else are we going to talk about? Oh, yeah. I want to give a big shout out to all, all my new subscribers, all my old subscribers, all my OGs, all my friends, all my family, everyone out there, all my patrons, every single one of you sending love, you know, whether you guys are sending some digibuy, some cash, you know, sending some Bitcoin, sending some, uh, you know, Lambo food. Again, Lambo really appreciates the Lambo food. I don't know who you are out there, but thanks for that, for the Lambo food. It's, it's, it's really good. Again, 
just thanks. And um, and um, just you know, thank you to everyone out there buying T-shirts. Um, I've added more stuff to the T-shirt. Uh, line uh, you know i got more stuff to the store um i, I it's it, for me it's hard i'm not a t-shirt designer you know what i mean if anyone out there you know is really good with graphic designs and they want to help out making some cool awesome designs for uh the show let me know all right and we can uh, maybe uh, work something out and uh, that'd be pretty cool but otherwise i'm making the designs and uh, they're coming slowly but surely if you guys want any kind of uh you know um Custom designs, let me know, and uh, I'll, I'll have Lambo work on it, okay? And uh, we'll go from there. So, guys, thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon, and um, stay awesome. I love you, and have an amazing day. Oh, and don't forget to tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m., all right, on the YouTubes. Every Wednesday, 11 a.m., I have uh, my crypto uh, live stream. Now, even though it's uh, heavily crypto related, you know, my live streams, I talk about whatever the hell is in the news, right? If there's crypto news, we talk about crypto. If there's actual new economic news, we talk about that. Uh, if there's nothing to talk about, we always have something to talk about. Anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow, all right? Thank you so much for watching, and uh, peace out. Laters. Hey guys, guess what? Me and Lambo are still here. We haven't left yet. You know why we're here? Because I want to tell you all about this new store that I just opened up. Yeah, that's right. It's our new sponsor as well. Let me tell you a little bit more about it. So, as you guys can see, this is the store. I just opened up the store, I don't know, about a week ago. And um, I'm going to be selling all my merch and all of our stuff here, whether it's Lambo stickers, whether it's, you know, mugs t-shirts, jackets, you name it. We got all kinds of stuff that you guys can buy and um, help support the show. Now you get to have your very own shirt or your very own Lambo sticker. And if you guys want any special requests on things for me to put in the store, then please, by all means, let me know and uh, we'll get our graphic artist, you know, on top of it. Yeah, that means you gotta work, Lambo. All right, guys, thank you so much. Love you guys and I'll see you guys manana.